Drinking buddies. We got shell versus allocated versus unicorn. Let's go. I'm your drinking buddy. <sighs> All right, drinking buddies. So this is a little bit of a shell versus allocated versus unicorn theme. I was going for 107 proofers, and uh, I've seen this sitting on shelves in Texas. I don't know if that's extremely common, but multiple stores when I've been there, I've seen it sitting on shelves. It sits on shelves in California believe this to be a shelf bottle. I apologize if it's one you can't find in your area. I can't find it in my area, but it is available on shelves in the States where I've seen it, uh, you know, just sitting on shelves in the States where it's available. It's sitting on shelves in the States where I know it's available from what I have seen, from my perspective. Next up, I will be honest, this is way more of a unicorn than it is an allocated, but I wanted to go for a shelf versus allocated versus unicorn theme. 107 proofers, uh, it was challenged. So they're all 107 proof. This one comes from Wild Turkey. This one comes from Jack Daniels. And this one, of course, is the famous Van Winkle from Buffalo Trace. Um, I finished my bottle long ago, but my good friend Mac was nice enough to send me a sample or to give me a sample of his. Uh, question, random question. Are these the three best legacy bourbon distilleries? That would be Wild Turkey, Jack Daniels, and, uh, and, um, Buffalo Trace. I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure there's going to be someone who, who says Heaven Hill or Jim Beam belongs, but just a question for the for the audience. So leave a comment below if you think these are the three best uh, legacy distilleries of bourbon. Anyway, um, these two guys are rye bourbons and this guy is a weeded bourbon. Um, what does that mean? Well, as you know, bourbon has to be at least 51% corn, but that other 49% can be made up of, well, any other grain. Um, usually that means rye, but sometimes that means wheat. Let's dive in. Wow, there's gonna be a lot of cherry said today. So this one's cherry and tobacco. Spice, a little spicy on here. A little bit of spice, rice spice maybe. Could be barrel jar. Sometimes on the nose, I can't tell the difference. Well, that's, that's delightful. Um, wow. Yeah. So that's a uh, cherry vanilla soda. Uh, that's like, um, that is, uh, man, I want to say pound cake, <laughs> uh, barrel char. Uh, yeah, that's just, that's just good. That's just really good. Ooh. Um, now this one's got more barrel on it than the first one for sure. This is an older gal. She, she likes tea and she drives a Buick. Mm, that, that's really good. I want to live here. <laughs> there is a lot of oak presence on that one. That is, uh, that is medicinal cherry. Oak, man, I, I, I dare I say that is borderline over-oaked. Um, wow, uh, I have heard people say that about Jack 12, but I didn't agree with it. Yeah, that is medicinal, medicinal cherry. That is, uh, wow. Um, there's also some nice um, raspberry flavor here. Uh, so there's, there, it's, it's kind of funny because it's like a lot of like fruity notes, like strawberry, raspberry, cherry, whatever you want to call that, like extra fruity brightness with at the same time, you know, you're licking a cigar box and, you know, you're sm maybe smelling an ashtray. Uh, I don't <laughs> I believe that to be the Jack 12, but I'm not bottle guessing here. I'm here to tell you which is the best. I went right into that one without giving it any nosing notes, but it is really good. Um, on the nose is pretty similar to glass one, actually. I'm going back in because I need to do a little comparison. Man, those two are actually way more similar than I expected. But on here, I'm getting brown sugar, bourbon vanilla. There's cherry here. There is... Uh, some nice barrel char notes and sweet tea, like sweet tea is pretty, pretty, uh, pretty here. <laughs> Not very uh, much for words today, I guess. 
while drinking, but he's, I'm going to go through these again. I'm going to skip this part. Why? Well, I've had a couple people in the comments re recently say, why do you skip this part? Well, this part often takes me 20, 30 minutes. Um, I go through these pretty in detail. Uh, I think about it. I drink a lot of water in between each sip so that, and a lot of time in between each sip so that I can really develop that, that finish. Um, it's not very entertaining to watch, I don't think. And, and I kind of like doing it quietly, not saying everything out loud, just kind of thinking in my head. So that's kind of why I cut it out. And also I don't really pick up that many different notes the second time through. So, so if I left it in, you would just hear me saying the same things. So and that's why I cut it. And uh, yeah, I got to go through them again. We'll be right back. This one is very obviously the Jack and it is my favorite. Um, and this one, is uh it's one of those two on the ends here but um what i've learned here is whichever one of these is this it makes a pretty darn good um you know replacement bottle for van winkle now you might say well it's not even weeded well that doesn't matter if it tastes like it um man there's some similarities going on here for me I'm going to go ahead and say I like this one slightly more than that one. It's, ba it's barely. And the only reason I'm saying that is, is on this one, I'm getting the beginning of the finish, like right as I swallow, I'm getting a little hit of ethanol and makes it taste like it's a higher proof than the other two. Whereas the flavor's really great, just that little hit of ethanol, it's not really as good as the, you know, finish on these two. So. Okay, so the 10 was the second favorite. Like I said, there's no real home run here. And then the Saffle was last. So what did we learn here today? Jack Daniels 12 is actually, in fact, better than Old Rip 10. I did not expect to see that. Um, and then the Saffle is a great alternative for, for, the, for the Old Rip, for sure. Um, anyway, drinking buddies, thank you so much for watching. Every time you guys like these videos, you make it possible for me to keep doing this. It is pretty expensive. So one thing you can do to help me out is, um, you know, like, subscribe, and uh, maybe drop a comment below. Uh, and uh, if you're a super fan, we have a link to become a channel member in the description down below. And it's a, a good way to uh, make be involved in a community with great whiskey lovers. We're still pretty small and everyone in the community is amazing. Um, so cheers. Thank you so much. Cheers. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.